Hi guys, today I'm going to discuss on the topic of depression. Depression is a mood disorder. It can also be considered as a psychiatric or uh, an affective disorder, right? Now let's move on to the definition of depression. Depression is defined as a persistent feeling of sadness, loss, anger that interferes with a person's everyday activities. Okay? The person will be feeling very sad, very low and will lack motivation for doing many things, right? So, let's move on to the symptoms. I will just be giving a gist of the symptoms. We, our main focus today is the pathophysiology. Okay, so the symptoms include low mood, trouble concentrating, fatigue or tiredness, hopelessness, irritability, restlessness, overeating, Either there will be overeating or appetite loss. So it can be one of these. Feeling of guilt and helplessness. Okay. Let's move on to the pathophysiology. Now the pathophysiology here in depression or any other psychiatric disorder is not, uh, you know, it's not that okay, it is because of this. It's sure it's because of this. No. Here it's a hypothesis. If you have noticed, there. For other disorders, we don't have the term hypothesis. We just surely mention that yes, it is because of this, right? Like example for stroke, we don't have any hypothesis. There are like sure uh, causes pointing out that yes, this is how stroke happens, right? But for uh, psychiatric disorders like depression or Parkinson's or schizophrenia, right? We have something called as hypothesis or assumptions because we don't have a clear underlying idea about what exactly is causing it okay so there is no clear pathophysiology for it so we are considering the hypothesis now there are three main hypotheses which are involved in this don't be scared there there are three but and so much is there so don't feel scared but it is very simple okay okay so monoamine hypothesis now when i look at the term monoamine uh, you may feel confused when you look at this term. Monoamine is very simple. It's mono as in single, amine as in amino group. Monoamine compounds include tyrosine, tryptophan, and other amino acids like uh, uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, and uh, serotonin. These three are also uh, monoamines. Okay, they are they these three are neurotransmitters, but they are also monoamine. Okay, so they are. Uh, this is called as monoamine hypothesis. As in, this first one will be discussing about these three uh, neurotransmitters, right? So what happens for to to these monoamines is there is a decline, right? There is a deficiency. Okay, now don't pay attention to this deficiency. Just pay attention to these three neurotransmitters. Now serotonin. What happens is it is released in uh, times of happiness or when the person is feeling happy this hormone is released this neurotransmitter is released dopamine also is released when we uh, do something which we like like our hobbies or when we see a piece of cake our reaction right so that time it causes a boost of this neurotransmitter and this dopamine and our body longs for that effect we crave that effect right that's why we always crave to eat uh, chocolates or cake and uh, we crave to watch that what happens in the next episode, right? That's all because it causes a rush of dopamine into our uh, brains, right? So, norepinephrine is the next home, uh, neurotransmitter. Now, this home uh, neurotransmitter is released when we uh, face extreme pleasure. When we go to extreme pleasure, this neurotransmitter is released and... Uh, extreme pleasure as in we are very happy that time it is released so all these three home uh, neurotransmitters if you have noticed if they, they have a common thing in it in them that is when the person is happy all these levels are elevated of all these neurotransmitters so in depression the exact opposite of this is happening the happiness exact op uh, opposite of it is happening so obviously all these three things will decrease right so there is a deficiency in the amount now if there is not a deficiency in the amount 
it is not functioning properly okay so it can be one of the two reasons either amount is decreased or it is not functioning okay of cortical and limbic serotonin okay so this cortical refers to uh, the layer outside of the cerebrum now over there also we have this neurotransmitter so in that area there is decreased neurotransmitter okay decreased level of this neurotransmitter so that is cortical now limbic is the group of subcortical structures of the brain like uh, which is involved with emotions and motivation so there is uh, if you look at the symptoms it deals with this emotions and motivation there is no motivation emotions are like low mood low everything less right low motivation everything less so uh, when there is a decrease in these regions it leads to depression that is our first hypothesis so all these three things decreases that is what we learnt in monoamine hypothesis all the monoamines decrease in short okay so the next hypothesis is neurotro neurotrophic hypothesis now there is a, a factor called as the brain derived neurotrophic factor BDNF brain derived neurotrophic factor is we can also call it as call it as brain derived growth factor okay so brain derived growth factor is involved in growth and development growth and development of what immature neurons and for mature neurons what it does is it supports its survival and its function okay so for uh, this brain derived neurotrophic factor is important for supporting the growth of immature neurons and enhances the survival and function of these adult neurons now if this level suddenly decreases now there is a, a constant level of this maintained inside our brain okay if this level decreases what do you think will happen yes the growth will decrease so the growth will decrease it will affect these neurons right so what happens is there is loss of neurons or monoaminergic neurons and there is loss of that functions of its functions because it supports the functions right so if it's less then this functions is lost then atrophy means the size will be reduced okay so atrophy of the hippocampus and other brain areas hippocampus is a part of the brain right so all those areas are affected now what we want what is our focus is hippocampus in this uh, section the neurotrophic hypothesis now what happens to the hippocampus is uh, as the neurons over there have undergone atrophy, function is lost, growth is less, neurons have lost, right? So, what happens is it also loses the ability to inhibit this CRF release by hypothalamus, okay? It inhibits its release, okay? The ability, what was its role? Hippocampus role was to inhibit the CRF release which is done by which is present in the hypothalamus okay hippocampus is involved in inhibiting this CRF release now what is CRF corticotrophin releasing factor corticotrophin releasing factor so hippocampus was involved in inhibiting CRF release CRF is present in hypothalamus okay but because the hippocampus is so badly affected it loses this ability and because it loses this ability there is an increase in glucocorticoids right hippocampus is uh, losing all its uh, neurons functions and atrophy is going on crf is increasing because of that because crf is increased glucocorticoids are also in increased now the major glucocorticoid which is present inside our body or our brain is cortisol now cortisol level shoots up in depression okay so that is our second theory that is the neurotrophic hypothesis and this main thing you have to remember is this factor brain derived neurotrophic factor or brain derived growth factor you can say it supports the growth and development of the immature ones mature neurons and the mature ones also and uh, if this suddenly decreases what happens it loses its uh, neuron functions as neurons are lost functions are lost 
size is uh, affected hippocampus is affected other brain areas are affected but we our focus is hippocampus now hippocampus may uh, it has lost the ability to uh, inhibit this crf now crf it is not getting inhibited so its level is increasing now it, this is increasing so this glucocorticoids are increasing okay because this is corticotrophin releasing hormone right glucocorticoid may major one is cortisol cortisol is increasing which is a feature of depression actually okay so that is the second hypothesis that is the neurotrophic hypothesis now the third pathophysiologic uh, pa hypothesis is neuroendocrine hypothesis this is the third and the last one so be patient now there is a test called dexamethasone suppression test now dexamethasone don't get confused dexamethasone is actually a uh, glucocorticoid okay it's a type of glucocorticoid dexamethasone hmm? now this dexamethasone suppression test now this is given it's done okay and what result we are expecting is that this cortisol should be suppressed okay all right i am explaining it in simple terms here dexamethasone suppression test when they do when they are doing this they are expecting these levels to decrease cortisol levels to decrease but what they observe is it doesn't decrease the cortisol level in 50 percent of depression patients now why they are expecting it to decrease because this is dexamethasone suppression test glucocorticoid in k uh, it involves glucocorticoid includes this cortisol and dexamethasone okay these two both are glucocorticoid so if this is getting suppressed this is also should this also is supposed to get suppressed but what was observed was it doesn't decrease in level in 50% uh, of the depressed patients its level is not decreasing only so what that indicates was that there is an imbalance in stress HPA axis okay these are the studies which they have done and found it that it, it uh, indicates what the imbalance in HPA axis now what is this HPA axis it is hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland axis now this there is an imbalance something good but is there in this axis okay that's why this level is not decreased okay once again I will go with this neuroendocrine hypothesis right here is something called dexamethasone suppression test what they expected was when this test is done this dexamethasone is similar to the cortisol because both belong to glucocorticoids right they expected it to decrease level but what happened it didn't decrease and what it caused it caused an imbalance in the hpa axis hpa was what hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland axis now after this the thing is very simple because we have learned it already over here now hypothal hypothalamus axis is imbalance hua hai. then that causes what it causes a dysregulation of hpa axis okay it causes a dysregulation now dysregulation has happened now this dysregulation will lead to increase in crf crf was corticotrophin releasing factor now crf if it increases we know what happens what happens glucocorticoid increases so here glucocorticoid we can see increasing glucocorticoid in specific cortisol is increasing now cortisol what we need to know is it is released by adrenal glands okay now adrenal glands is releasing this cortisol so because of continuous release 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 this adrenal gland is getting enlarged okay so these are the three effects we can see this is the first one that is crf is increasing and uh, then the glucocorticoids are increasing and then the adrenal gland is also size is increasing okay so this all happens because of this hp axis cut dysregulation why did this hp axis how did they find that this is getting dysregulated because when they administered the test dexamethasone suppression test what happened instead of decreasing cortisol it, they found that it is not decreasing okay it was supposed to decrease but it didn't decrease so what was uh, what was the result found that there is something wrong with the hp axis there is some imbalance in that axis now there is imbalance so it lead to uh, led to dysregulation dysregulation say it led to increase crf so increase crf has led to increase cortisol increase cortisol has led to increase size in the uh, adrenal gland okay now the similar to this hpa axis we have another axis called the hpt axis hpt axis is hypothalamus pituitary thyroid okay so there is a dis, uh, this is neighbor okay this hpa axis is neighbor to this hpt so if this is affected this also has a chance 
okay they are not saying confirm but there is a chance of this also getting affected now there, there is a dysregulation in hpt axis what it what happens is thyroid hormone decreases if thyroid hormone decreases it can be a symptom which is seen in depression so uh, this also can be a warning sign thyroid hormone deficiency okay it may be depression not confirm it may be depression okay so uh, that was the pathophysiology of depression it is very simple there are just three points three hypotheses monoamine monoamine first you have to remember what is this monoamine right then you can write about these three hormones all all of it decreases okay then the next one we have is neurotrophic hypothesis only thing you have to remember here is brain derived neurotrophic factor that is the only factor you have to remember what it what happens what is its functions you have to remember after that you have to remember what happens when it decreases okay if you remember one thing you can just write the opposite of it when it decreases what happens okay then we are focusing on the hippocampus hippocampus uh, what it loses okay crf you have to remember it's very important and there is a increase in glucocorticoids in the end just like 2 and 3 are somewhat similar right both have the same end point increase glucocorticoids now the third one you have to remember dexamethasone suppression test so this is the main point okay then you have to remember cortisol then there is a hpa axis very important imbalance that imbalance leads to increased crf there are three effects here enlarged adrenal gland and increased uh, cortisol then hpt axis dysregulation thyroid hormone deficiency which is seen in depression okay so i hope that was very clear and uh, you have understood everything if there are any problems please do let me know i try to make it as simple as possible thank you very much